All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to check out Adnan Rashid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm Adnan Rashid, your brother, back with another video on the topic of the Quran. Does the Quran endorse the Bible is the question I'm going to address today. And hopefully I will be going through some points to clarify this particular question. Does the Quran endorse the Bible? Firstly, let me highlight as to why the Christian missionaries have lately used a strategy to defend the Bible. Now imagine, if someone came to me and asked me whether the Quran is corrupt or not, do you expect me to say, the Bible is corrupt or the Bible confirms the Quran? Go to the Bible. The Bible confirms the Quran. The Bible confirms the Quran, therefore the Quran is not corrupt. Would that be a good defense of my scripture? No. I would pick up works of scholars and I would explain as to why the Quran is not corrupt. And that question will be addressed in another video, hopefully in the future. So that line of defense to use the Quran to defend the Bible is not working on Christians and Muslims. All right, Sam. Okay. <laughs> Notice what Adnan just said. <laughs> yeah. If you ask me whether my books were, my, whether my book is corrupt, I wouldn't start talking about your book and your revelations, I would only talk about my book and what scholars say about my book. That's the only defense I would give about my book. I wouldn't sit there and say, oh, but your book says this or your book yeah. says that. Now, Sam, yes, I, I don't know which Quran he's reading, 100%. but when people start, when, when the Jews and Christians kept telling Muhammad, why should we believe in you? Why should we believe in you? Why should we believe in your revelations? Didn't he always <laughs> start going to our books, the That's books right. of the Jews and the books of the Christians, saying that he's confirming our books and therefore we're supposed to confirm his book in return and that our books prophesy him and talk about his revelations? Isn't that what they say? Yes, it's an embarrassment that a Muslim like Adnan would want us to steer away from what his prophet said and appeal to scholars because folks understand what Adnan did. He's putting the views of scholars above his own prophet, meaning scholars carry more weight and have more authority than his prophet. He just argued himself outside of Islam because he condemned Muhammad as being less reliable and authoritative than uninspired, fallible human scholars but that's okay because we do agree with him Muhammad is a false prophet but for other reasons but now according to his criterion Muhammad did the very thing that he shouldn't have done if Muhammad were to apply the standards of Adnan that he's imposing on us where does the Quran say that Muhammad appealed to the scriptures of the Jews and Christians to confirm that he and his book are from the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because we're making a clip out of this. I'm going to read it. I'm going to start at chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. So by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm just going to read. I'll let Muhammad silence Adnan and Muslims and put them in their place. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. <clears throat> Children of Israel, remember my blessing wherewith I blessed you. And fulfill my covenant, and I shall fulfill your covenant, and have awe of me. And believe in that I have sent down, and here's the reason why, confirming that which is with you. He's talking to his contemporaries. What you have, my book confirms it, so believe in me. And be not the first to disbelieve in it. Sell not my signs for a little price, and fear you me. Do not confound truth with vanity falsehood, and do not conceal the truth wittingly. Side note. You can't conceal something you don't have. This assumes they have the truth, but they're trying to hide it. Continuing. And do not confound the truth with vanity, and do not conceal the truth wittingly, and perform the prayer, and pay the alms, and bow with those that bow. Will you bid others to piety and forget yourselves while you read the book? Not parts that are intact and other parts corrupted. You read the book, which the Quran confirms. Do you not understand? Another one. <clears throat> Chapter 2. Verse 89 and 91, chapter 2, verse 89 and 91. And they say, our hearts are uncircumcised. Nay, but Allah or God has cursed them for their unbelief. Little will they believe. When there came to them a book from God, Allah, meaning the Quran, confirming what is with them, what you have right now. And they aforetimes prayed for victory over the unbelievers. When there came to them that they recognized, they disbelieved in it. And the curse of Allah is on the unbelievers. And when they were told, 
believe in what Allah has sent down, meaning the Quran. Believe in it. They said, we believe in what was sent down on us. And they disbelieve in what is beyond that, yet it is the truth confirming what is with them. In other words, what's wrong with you? My Quran is saying your book is true. It's confirming it. It's absolutely the pure words of God. That should give you a reason to trust me in my book. Chapter 2, verse 101. When there has come to them a messenger from God confirming what is with them, a party of them that were given the book reject the book behind their backs as though they knew it not. That's chapter 2, verse 101. Chapter 2, verse 121. Those to whom we have given the book and read it with the true reading. You can't read a book with the true reading if your book is corrupt, Adnan. They believe in it, and whoso disbelieves in it, they shall be the losers. Chapter 4, verse 47. Chapter 4, verse 47. You who have been given the book, believe in what we have sent down, confirming what is with you. Let me repeat it again. You who have been given the book, meaning Jews and Christians. In the immediate context, it's the Jews. Believe in what has been sent down, meaning the Quran, confirming what is with you. And by the way, don't take my word for it. Go to any Arab lexicon and ask an Arabic speaker. What does sadaqa mean? Sadaqa <clears throat> means to confirm something as true, as reliable, as completely trustworthy. So what the Quran is saying is, the Quran confirms your book as being completely true, reliable, not a hint of anything corrupt in it. Now, David, I can read more, but do you want me to stop there? Uh, that, that, that's, I, I think that's enough because we'll be, we'll be going into more passages. But notice, Jews and Christians, you need to believe in my book because my book is confirming your book. And if you look at, you know, the claims about, you know, Surah 7, verse 157, that our book actually contains prophecies about Muhammad and so on, it's always, hey, I'm confirming the scriptures that you have and your scriptures talk about me. But that is exactly the approach Anand says it's ridiculous and absurd to take. He says, whatever you do, whatever you do, Never never point to another book as confirmation of your book, because that would be silly and absurd. Instead, you need to go to what scholars say and look at what they said, but never point to the other book as confirmation of your own book. What does his God do? What does his prophet do? Do they go to the, do they go to the scholars? Do they go to, the, do they go to the Bart Ehrman and so on? Of course not. He says, your book says, and so Anan, once again, has condemned his own God, has condemned his own prophet. He has apostatized, and you wonder why. And ladies and gentlemen, it's because his religion forces him to do this. If there was a way out of this, he would simply give the way out. He would simply say, no, our book doesn't affirm your book. This is a lie. Here are all the verses that show that your scriptures have been corrupted and our, our book doesn't affirm your scriptures. He wouldn't sit here whining that we do what his God does, namely say, hey, stop objecting to my book right. because your book says it. The only difference is we're doing it for an entirely different reason. Allah in the Quran is affirming the inspiration and preservation and authority of our books because he's claiming that he is confirming and that he revealed the books that we have with us. That's the point we're drawing to show that he actually destroyed his own religion. The way we're using it is to uncover this complete contradiction that is at the core of Islam and that is responsible for some very strange behavior that Muslims just cannot spot. They do not understand that it's a problem to run around saying, your book's corrupt, your book's corrupt, your book's, your book's corrupt, your book affirms my prophet, your book affirms my prophet, your book affirms my prophet. They do not understand how insane this sounds, right? They do not understand how insane it sounds to be saying that our books are corrupt and untrustworthy while simultaneously appealing to our books to confirm their own prophet and then telling us to believe in their revelation, a revelation which confirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our scriptures, scriptures that completely contradict their own revelations, right? They do not see the insanity of this. Why? Because their God and their prophet had absolutely no clue what they were talking about. That's the point we're trying to draw. And no amount of whining and contradicting your own God and your own prophet, Adnan, is going to stop us. Amen.